feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of double X. Power 21. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, positive power 21. Jerry Ross Live Worldwide. That's right, you tell him, little buddy. You're listening to Late Night. Late Night with Jerry Ross Live Worldwide and the beautiful Kimmy Kim out of St. Louis. Welcome, everybody. We got a great, great show for you, like I always say. But welcome, welcome. If you're staying up late, if you're on the East Coast, and if it's early, you're on the West Coast. If you're overseas, we appreciate you guys for hanging in there. I know you're like six, seven hours ahead of us. But I appreciate you guys. Thank you for writing in. Thank you for calling me <laughs> on Messenger. That's cool. That may take calls. Anyway, y'all, uh, I hope everybody having a great week. Happy Monday, happy Monday. So much has been going on in the world. But we got to keep it positive. That's right, y'all. Control your thoughts. You're actually creating this movie yourself and you don't even realize it. That's what they be telling us. That's what a lot of those life coaches be saying out there on YouTube. They say you're actually creating the movie yourself with your thoughts. It could be right because you're, cause your thoughts are being manipulated <laughs> in the direction they wanted to go in. So be careful, y'all, what you think about. You know you know how you think of a snowball and next thing you know you're eating a snowball. See that? You created that movie. All right, let's talk to Kimmy Kim. I know, that man's tired. Long day. What's up, Kimmy Kim? What's going on in your world? How are you? I'm good, Batman. How about you? Good, good. I'm excited. You got a great, great guest tonight. I know you're kind of excited to talk to her. I, yeah. Yes, I am. I see that she is an author. I'm looking forward to this wonderful discussion about her book and and the reason behind the book and just to have a good fellowshipping time. Yeah, yeah, I think she's a new author, too, if I'm not mistaken. Now, I got to give a shout out to Dr. Wes. Dr. Dr. Anna Wes always looking out for the Batman, sending me awesome guests. And we really appreciate that. Her and um, some other promoters out there always looking out for us. And I, you know, one thing I say, the listeners do look forward to it. I mean, I'm not sure if they all purchasing books or looking for audible you know amazon because i know we have so many so many guests on the show but listen listeners if you're listening yeah you know just google their name and um find out where their books are located at you know some people do give away their books you know 99 cent two dollars that's nothing for the amount of work that they put into the projects and of course i know a lot of us are spoiled because we like to go to the book signings you know, but you can meet the author, get your book signed, and it real it feels really good to get a chance to meet the author. But hopefully, uh, Omari Cannon will be able to tell us where she's going to be in the next coming weeks or next coming month. Or you can follow her on her website or her Facebook page and find out where she's going to be, so you can get a copy of her book. Because I know that is that is nice. I know pan, the pandemic kind of took a, a lot of this, that away from us. You know, you agree with that, Kimmy Kim? Yeah, they're face to face. I do. It's. I still believe that uh, it did, but then sometimes I think people use this as a crutch. So it just depends on the situation. <laughs> yeah. You know, and the funny thing, some authors, yeah. some authors were very creative during that period because I remember going to a couple um, uh, book events that was virtual, and uh, those those authors were moving some books, man. And I remember um, one of our past podcasters, she's not with us anymore, she passed last year, uh, but she had a, a big uh, mm. conference on, a speaking conference. And I think pretty much every speaker except for myself had a book. You know, I, I was in a book. I oh, wow. That's yeah, amazing. I was, I was published. That's right. Batman forgot he was published in a book before. I was part of a collaboration project. Can't remember the name of it right now, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it'll come to you yeah. i get to, i have those moments <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. but I, you know you know you get a chance to write your little page and everything you know keep it moving but that's something that's been going on for many many years if you remember they used to have one of those, those poetry books that used to come out and you i guess you're like who who poets something like that and you were able to publish your poetry and get credit as a as a published author that was going on like years ago. Yeah, collaboration. 
Yeah, it was like yeah. you just contribute your little poetry. That's how a lot of people started. Yeah, yeah, got copyright. You know, I, copyright. I did a couple. Did yeah. you? Yeah, right. That's what you have. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, you have. Good for you, Doctor Robinson. I That's forget. Right. Wow, oh, no, Kimmy Kim. Ah, 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 you know, ah, I, ah, I am planning ah. Kimmy Kim to put out a series of books for the Skeet Jones collection, the puppet for Puppet TV, because a lot of the kids are like, you know, they got to wait like a whole week for the show to come on again. You know, wherever they're watching, because we don't really put it online. It's just on cable networks in three cities. And um, uh-huh. I said, maybe I should just go ahead and put out some stories because we can't really do the stories with the puppets like we want to. So basically, the, the TV show is really a music TV show for kids, like MTV, you know, like they have for the teens and adults. It's really a music television show for kids. and um, But we don't really do... Okay. But we do have authors who come on and, and, and you know, read their books, you know, for four or five minutes. Cause a lot of books are really short. But I really like to put out... Um, uh, a, some pro, a few projects on Audible, and um, who knows? You know, see where that goes. That's that's my, maybe, that's my plan. I'm sure it will be successful. Anything that you put your hands on, it turns to gold. Yeah. You're you're definitely gifted. Thank you. I know God is God, God gave us a lot. You know, so uh, we're grateful for the, yeah. the television program for kids. And again, you know, if you're in um, Brooklyn, uh, I think it's in the Bronx in a school somewhere. But if you're in Brooklyn or uh, the Georgia area, North Carolina, like I think Durham, Chapel Hill, uh, you can in uh, Carsboro, you can catch it on uh, on, on uh, Spectrum and Comcast. So uh, just look for Skeet Jones on those networks. I think it's the People's Network and Brick TV up in Brooklyn in the Cobb. The Cobb TV twenty five. That's now that's streaming. You can catch them on Saturdays. So, uh, so we're gonna try to do okay. better. You know, give the kids a little bit more uh, options to access the Puppet TV show. All right. Well, you ready? That you ready sounds to- like fun. Oh, I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm looking forward to it. So, you ready to uh, talk to your guest, Miss Amari Cannon? I sure am. Yeah, I got a chance to talk to him. I'm ready mm-hmm. to fellowship with her as well. Yes, hey, I yeah. am. Amari Cannon, welcome to Late Night with Jerry Rose Live Worldwide and Kimmy Kim. How are you? I am well. How are you? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. In some places it's morning. Good evening, my sister. Oh, good morning. <laughs> it's a evening. It's a evening right now. Well, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm going to sit back and turn the mic over to uh, Kimmy Kim, Dr. Robinson. You guys have a great show. Amen. Amen. Hello, my sister. How are you? I am well, a little tired, but, you know, not complaining, just explaining. Ah, I might have to take that one now. <laughs> I have not heard of that one. Not complaining, just explaining. I like okay. that. Okay. Oh, I'm just so kidding. I got it from him. He always say that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So before we begin, I would just want to give a shout out to the Positive Power family. Batman, thank you once again for this wonderful opportunity. And my sister, before we begin this wonderful fellowshipping time, can you tell the sister who is Sister Cannon? I'm sorry, say that again? Can you tell the listener who is Sister Cannon? Yes, so my name is Omari Cannon. I am a first-time author. I published my first Yay. book in February. I am also a Christian woman. I am a married woman. I am a boy mom. <laughs> I am so many things all in one, but that's just a snippet of me. I also love to bake, cook, skin care, self-care. I'm a huge advocate of it all. That's awesome. Awesome. I love the fact that you love to bake. What's your favorite thing to bake? (laughs) I love food. Um, I would say my most popular is cheesecake, but I've been baking a lot of cookies lately. Oh, cheesecake. I love that. So what is your favorite cheesecake flavor? My favorite is just the basic strawberry. Strawberry? Okay. Okay. Actually, okay, because, you, so you know, cheesecake is one of my favorite. <laughs> I like cheesecake. 
My favorite one okay. is the carrot cake cheesecake. The Cheesecake Factory has ah. that one. They don't have it anymore. But I they had carrot cake? One. They did have it. They used to have a cheesecake carrot cake a couple of years ago. They don't have it no more, but I learned how to make it myself because I wanted one. <laughs> Ah, you may have to send that shipping to me, you know, carrot cake, I love. <laughs> now, to have that in the format of a cheesecake, mmm, you got me mm-hmm. hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> so how how are you doing today overall? Well. How, how was your well. Monday? My Monday was very busy. I had an appointment. My two boys had an appointment, so we were very we were out there all day. Um, so it was it was kind of a busy day, but in all in all, it was a great day. No complaints. Awesome. Where are you from? You got a New I'm York from the accent. Bronx, New York. Yeah, I'm <laughs> from the Bronx. Yeah. yeah. Okay, the Bronx. And uh, are you in New York now, or have you migrated to another city? No, I am still in the Bronx. I'm still in New York. I have yet to leave. But you don't have to, because people want to come to New York to live. <laughs> You're in the best city. I love New York. I to live in New York, if I could afford it, I just can't afford that price tag. Oh. But unless you're raised in New York, it's different. But when you're not raised there, it's like, ooh, it's so economical, expensive. It's very expensive. It's not economical. So tell me, uh, how long have you been writing? I started writing when I was a child, uh, like just kind of like a hobby, you know, for pastime, but also kind of an emotional clutch. Um, I, but this was my first official book that I published this year and my first official book that I wrote this year. Um, but I would say back when I was, like, in elementary school, I used to write short stories and poems, and my dad would put them, like, in, like, these little booklets, and I used to bring them to school. Like, I wrote a book. So <laughs> it's always been Aww. a passion of mine. It's wow, so that's amazing. So you knew you knew from day one that you love the passion of writing. What is it about writing that you love? I like the – it used to be emotional release for me, you know, releasing that negative energy for me. Now uh, I write really because I want to reach people on an emotional level. Not so much an emotional release mm-hmm. anymore, but I want to reach people on an emotional level and kind of connect with them to show them that, you know, life happens, but what we take from that and what we learn from that is how we're able to grow from it. So that's what keeps me writing now. Beautiful, because writing is one of my releases too. When I'm having a bad day, I go and journalize it. (laughs) And um, did you uh, start with journaling? Then you realize, oh, I could put all of my... um, daily journals or things that I journal into a book. Have you ever thought of doing that, or how did you come about with this first book? Um, No, it was more of, I said, you know what, I kind of want to write a book that kind of addresses all of these type of topics. And and so I just started writing. You know, I, I did kind of a small outline of, the different topics I wanted to touch in the so in the book, and then I just kept writing and didn't read it back over until I was done. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I love that about that about you. So basically, you had an outline because you know I have talked to authors, and everyone has their different process of how to formalize a book. So you do outlines, and you just go with the outline. That's a that's how I used yeah, to do so, my you know, writing. Yes, yeah, so I didn't do, like, an extensive outline, you know. Like, I didn't break down, like, oh, I want to write all these different details. It was more like, okay, in these two chapters, I want to talk about this, and these are the character names. And so just to give a little okay. um, snippet about my book, you know, my book does talk about trauma. It does talk okay. about, you know, molestation, rape, um, physical abuse. Um, mental health, it does talk about um, drug overdose. It is a very heavy read, 
And so it it's not for everyone, and I recognize that, but the reason why I wrote my book the way I wrote it is because I do want people to be able to connect with what society has depicted the negatives in society, the hidden secrets in yeah. society, and I wanted people to be able to identify who have dealt with trauma that you're not chained by those things, you're not bounded by those things, and you can heal from those things. So the reason why I wrote my book the way I wrote it is to kind of bring people not through, per se, emotional roller coaster, but to show people that, look, there are dark times, but we can get over it. There is a happy ending. There is a light at the end of that dark tunnel. Awesome. I love that. And basically, it's allowing people to know that it's not your fault, like you say. I just want to reiterate. And you have a chance to, um, you know, share your story with someone else who may be going through the same situation. That is what we are here for. I love that. So tell us of the name of your book and uh, how long did it take for you to write this book? So the title of my book is titled Dark Secrets. I started writing back in August, and I wow. finished it in February. And it's not a long read. It's really only 106 pages. But the reason why I went ah, so quickly... You are a writer. Was, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't necessary. Normally it takes some people longer than that yeah. to do that many yeah. pages. I'm sorry yeah. for breaking up, but that's amazing. I... um. I'm really passionate about this message, you know, about healing, people healing, you know, understanding that there is there are tough times. And I do recognize that this is not a subject that is really spoken outside in society. You know, and it, that's why I titled it Dark okay. Secrets, not because people are keeping it secret, but because people have been conditioned to believe that these things need to be kept secret. And my overall message and goal is to show people that, look, though it has happened and you may have been conditioned to think that it should be hidden, no, you should get help. You should be able to heal yourself, get the help that you need if you can't heal yourself and you can't overcome those things. So the passion behind the message is what drove me to write the book in such a fast turnaround. Um, I do have a two-year-old and a one-year-old. And so it was a lot of late nights with my husband trying to do this <laughs> first drafts and the editing and early mornings trying to write it on, with quiet space. And so it was a journey to get it done in the amount of time that I got it done. But, again, I was very passionate about it. That's beautiful. And so why are you passionate about dark secrets? Do you... Have you have experience from it, or do you know someone who went through this similar situation? So I do have my own personal traumas that I did have to heal from. And so because of that, um, and I do, you know, have some uh, close family members that did experience some of um, the things that I should like in the book. And so because of my personal and just things that have been uh, shown, I just really wanted to get it out there because where I have healed from minds and I want people to be in that same space, I recognize that in talking to some people they haven't been they haven't made it to that space. And that's what drives my passion. I love that. And I love the fact that you like to um help people with their dark secrets and what are some of the steps you have found to help someone? Um with their um, secrets? How do you allow them to open up to um, a person who really wants to help? Because we may have a listener who's going, or who may know people who's going through some dark places in their lives, and they, you know, they, they tend to be very sheltered, and they don't want to say anything. So what are some of the steps that you recommend to... Um, give based off the findings in your book um, information because it is very important that someone can confide in someone because, you know, it helps with the internal tears, you know? So for me and my experience, 
I am a listener. You know, sometimes when you want people to open up to you, you can't be so quick to want to jump in when they're trying to talk, right? And understanding people's language, whether it be body or just verbal language, and allowing them the space to speak what they want to share, but not writing too much. You know, sometimes people, they shut down when they feel like someone is asking too many questions and is a very sensitive topic. And so in my Mm, experience, I allow people to share as much as they feel comfortable sharing. And if I feel like I need clarity on something, then I may say something like, do you mind if, you know, I ask you something a little bit more personal just to, you know, get a little bit clarity or some content, you know, but uh, giving that option to allow a person to want to give more information, right? Because sometimes when we are so quick to just want to ask, what happened, when did it happen, where did it happen, people shut down, right? They're not really ready to address all those questions, all those answers. So just allowing that safe space to allow them to speak in the fashion that they want to speak in it and share as much as they want to share. And if you have something that can afford them um, some type of happiness, like if you have something as an experience, like I use my own experiences as a testimony to help others. So I may say something like, you know, um, I understand what you're going through. I mean, I have been through exactly what you're going through, but I have been through X, Y, Z, and hopefully that opens the door to allow someone to feel comfortable to share a little bit more. You know, a lot of times when we share our darkness, it gives people the light and the path to want to share theirs. When they're not in the spotlight, they can feel related. That is so true because, like, I don't like how you um, mentioned, like, how some people who try to help, they tend to really highlight them instead of the victim. And that is one of the problems, too, because sometimes we can over-talk, we can talk too much and just allow them to be the talker and with their listener. And then if they want us to confide in the things that... Um, will help them, then that's when we will talk. That is so important to be a proactive listener. That is so awesome. And with with this wonderful book, who is your audience? Would it be women, men, both? I, in my opinion, I would say it's both, though my main characters are women. Um, I know that mm-hmm. I have I've been told that, you know, they feel that it is a book for women. And the reason why I say both is not so much because um, I don't want to leave men out, but it's because, you know, men go through things as well, right? A lot of the times as a woman, you know, I focus on women, but men go through things as well. And and the reason why I say my book is for that is because the overall message behind it, right, that there is light Mm -hmm. at the end of the tunnel, there is deliverance at, at the end of that pain. And so that's why I say men are also my audience, but also because even if men never, the you know, specific kind of man has never been through this type of trauma, they can be empathetic and sympathetic to a woman that has been. You know, to be able to walk in the shoes of the women in the book to see what they have experienced, what their emotions have been driven, that will help men be able to be empathetic and sympathetic to that woman in that situation. So... I would say it's for both men and women. Um, I, I know that my main characters in my book are women, and it's not necessarily for people who have dealt with trauma per se, but also just to shed light on just society in general to understand how to maneuver people who have dealt with trauma or to recognize that there is trauma victims in our society and that we should allow them that space to be able to heal and be heard. Yes, that's very important as well. I really believe healing um, can only start when someone feels, like you say, um, they're in a safe space and they know that um, they understand that they have confidence in you and they can share their stories because we all need to be heard. and. Unfortunately, there are those who are overlooked, and I love this, the fact that 
you're sharing your stories to um, display that, hey, I've gone through this too. And uh, what God has done for me, he will do the same for you. And I'm here to help. That is so amazing. Where can people find your book? My book is located on Amazon. It does have a paperback. It does have an e. It does have an ebook. I do offer autographed copies. If anyone wants to reach out to me on my social media platforms, I can ship it out and I will autograph it for you. I my Instagram and my Facebook is author Omari Cannon. I am going also, if anyone wants to meet me in person, I will be at the Saratoga Book Festival in October, October 5th. It is a Saturday. And I believe it's from 10 to 3. Let me see. Okay. Is that, uh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm I was going at 8.30 to 3. <laughs> 8.30, okay. The funny thing is I was about to ask you, um, do you have any upcoming book signings? Sing we're in the spirit together. <laughs> that's amazing. See, that's what I'm talking about. We want to get a hold of this book because um, although the Bible has wonderful stories and things like that, it's still good to, and I believe that's the foundation for me, but it's still good to read other overcomers. That's good that you're yeah. overcomer and you're sharing your story so that others can overcome as well. I really thank you for that. Uh, with that being said, what are some of the things you enjoy doing outside of writing? Outside of writing, I love to cook, uh, mainly because I love food. I am a foodie. I love to <laughs> bake. <laughs> As I said before, I love to bake. Um, I love having family time. You know, I'm very passionate about my family life. Um and my family dynamic. Uh, I mean, I also I have a strong practice for self-care and self-esteem, so that is, you know, one of my pastime advocacies <laughs> and um, workshops. So outside of writing, I am surrounded by that kind of empowerment space. Awesome. Awesome. So you're... Basically adding another link to your book, you know, you do workshop and you collaborate with others. That's beautiful. What is your favorite color and why? I'm trying to think. Do I have a favorite color? I feel like my favorite <laughs> color sometimes is pink, sometimes is red. I don't really know if I have one these days. I know growing up my favorite color was definitely purple. Without a doubt, it was purple. Purple. Days, I'm okay. Not sure if I have a favorite color. I was thinking about that recently because someone asked me. I'm like, I don't know if I have one. <laughs> purple is beautiful too now. Pink is as well as red. So those are one of my, uh, well, those are some of my favorites. You know, it's kind of hard to have a favorite one, but um, I enjoy yeah. purple because we are royalty. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So with that being said, um, you mentioned, I want to go back to the book. Um, you mentioned that you um, did your book within six months. What was the driving force um, that you took to make sure that this is completed within that time frame? Because um, some authors take a few years to do a book. I know you said that you want to get it out there, but is it because you knew that people were depending on this book to receive some type of help from the uh, trauma that they, you know, experience? Well, I mean, you did a the, quick turnaround. <laughs> yes, so the, my passion did drive me to stay disciplined in writing. I did have a, 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 a support system. I was in this uh, pending purposely mentorship program. And it is what inspiring authors and writers, and that community definitely helped motivate me in writing this book, you know, getting feedback on my first drafts and my um, book title um, kind of brainstorming and the book cover and 
the whole process of helping me build, you know, get to publishing the book. So I would say that mentorship program definitely was a huge help in, you know, making my dreams come true. They did give kind of like soft deadlines, and really it was really up to you on when you wanted to publish the book and how to get you to that goal. And for me, I'm very... I'm very, I'm like a scheduler, so the deadlines worked great for me. I, it doesn't work for everyone, mm-hmm. but that worked great exactly. for me. So I wanted to beat my deadlines, and so that's what kind of mm. kept me motivated. And I'm like, yeah, I can, I can do it by then. I can do it by then. And so that kept me going. You had many nights, didn't you? You had to have many late, late, late nights, like you said, yeah. while your husband was uh, caring for the young ones. Early morning. <laughs> And sometimes that is commendable. I type some of my book on my phone, so sometimes I did it during the middle of the day, but for the better commendable. part, it was definitely in the late night hours or the early, early hours. So when do you write? Do you write with music or do you write in silence? Or is it both? I would, I would say both. Both. Um, if I'm really... Uh, like, for example, if I'm in, in a flow, then I could play the music because I'm not needing to focus. But if I'm still trying to get get my bearings together, I need complete quiet so I can get my thoughts together, okay. you know, work out how I want to things to sound. And so that that's how I operate. Once I'm in a groove of things, then I could play the music because my brain is already focused on what I'm writing. Got you. And will there be a part two for this book? I would say yes. It sounds like a part I two because, you know. Part two. Um, it's not my next book. My next book is not a part two. I will say that my next book is a children's book. Uh, oh, but tell me more about that. A part <laughs> two. So my children's book is titled God Made Us All, and I use my family oh. as the main characters, so myself, my husband, our two boys, and it is seen in a playground where we're teaching our boys the power of being kind to everyone. So, you know, we touch on different uh, disabilities and abilities and class, um, the less fortunate, and just to show children that we should be kind to all, that God made us all and we should be kind to them, no matter how differently they may see be, you know, seem or smell or even talk or look, we should still be kind and be friends with everyone. So that is the overall message behind my children's book. And it should be available probably closer to the fall. Oh, wow. You are definitely busy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Would that be, it will be on Amazon as well? It would, that also, book? it would be on Amazon as well. I definitely will be posting it on my social media platforms when it is available. Wow. Because Batman, he has um, children, but well, he has this wonderful puppy called Ski. He's amazing. He's amazing. Maybe you guys can hook up together. You never know. Wow. You're a busy soul. So how do you, you mentioned me time. What are some of the things that you, for your me time, your self-care, what are some of your self-care? Because a lot of us tend to overwork, work, 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 and there's no self-care. So maybe someone, you know, may be needing some ideas. So what do you do? So self-care for me, I do, you know, I, love um skincare routine i love scrubs and so um i make my own at home so for me spending that time to make my own for me and my family um having that quiet space in my room today my self-care was taking a nap (laughs) oh i love naps (laughs) so you know or just going in the kitchen and cooking something that's that's just my quiet time because that's something i enjoy doing it's not a task I do go to the salon, you know, the nail salon and the hair salon. Not very often because, you know, I do have some back issues, so sitting there is kind of pain. But every now and again I do treat myself to that um, 
And just having that space just outside of everyone else and just that quiet space to just do whatever it is that I want to do, whether if it's planning a workshop or taking a nap or just sitting here on social media, it's just allowing my time that quiet space where I don't have to be distracted in anything else that's going on. Uh, so sometimes self-care is not even necessarily me doing anything, right? Um, and oh, absolutely. Those are the best ones. Sometimes it's sitting back, drink some wine, and watching a movie. I watched this movie called um, uh, the new Tyler Perry movie, Divorce in the Black. That is That was a good movie. <laughs> wow. And I think that's one of his best movies that I've liked so far. Yeah, the boys it was a good movie. Black, I'm like you. I'm divorced in the black. Mm-hmm. Divorced. It's on Prime Video. Okay, I'm going to look it up. Oh, girl. It was so good. It just came out on, over the weekend. Oh, okay. Prime Video, yeah. Gonna, yeah. It was, oh, girl. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I can tell you. It just, it. I had to watch it twice. It was just that good because... I got, I'm getting kind of tired of Medea, so I'm kind of glad that this is a really serious movie. And um, it, it looks pretty good. So I believe it's up here like that, too, you know? Don't do anything, you know? Sometimes. Yes. You know, it's interesting oh, that you asked about self-care. I, um, I just recently did a workshop this past October, I mean, this earlier in this month in July, and I talked about self-care. And a lot of Times where you know we think going to the salon and the gym is self care. There are actually seven pillars of self care. I'm not sure if you knew that, but there are seven yeah. pillars of yeah, self care. Please They have so they have mm-hmm. emotional, m- emotional, mm-hmm. mental, physical, spiritual, recreational, um, social, and then the last one is environmental. All right, so self-care is not just caring about you, but also the things around you. So making sure that your me- your mental health and your emotional health is fine, everything around you, whether it's your house, your job, your car, making sure that is in a healthy space, right? The people you associate yourself with, making sure that they are healthy to you, right? And um, So there's so many things to That's self-care beautiful. that we just, fall short of mm-hmm. sometimes so pouring into one aspect of self-care, but there's so many different self-care. So where you said watching a movie, and I love that, it, that is self-care, right? Having that time to do something that you just need in that moment. Yeah, you know, sometimes you can work overwork, and sometimes you can overkill, like going to the mall or getting your nails or hair done. I, I love getting my hair done. Because I just like watching a good movie. And then there are times I love watching old movies. <laughs> yeah, I've watched, mm-hmm. you know, one of the movies I enjoy watching to this day, even though I watched it over 50 times, is Coming to America. That movie is still funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't care how many times I watch that movie. It's still goofy to me. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I think that's old movie. That. Last month or the month before last, we just watched it recently, actually. Uh huh. It was on TNT and it was also on BET. I just enjoyed that movie. I know. It's just weird. Even though I know um, basically everything, I was like, okay, here it comes. <laughs> it's just funny and goofy. Because, because my favorite movie growing up was um, The Wedding Singer with Adam Sandler. I like that one too. Yeah, it, yeah, I like that one too. Their movie, I can probably recite every word in that movie. <laughs> I watched it so many times. <laughs> I enjoy movies, um, and that's my weakness. Maybe so my goal is to start doing a uh, schedule now and start reading more because TV is <laughs> fun to me, but it's. It's my mental state because I do a lot of analytical work during the day, and sometimes I do it on the weekends. And so my mind sometimes is see to be free, like you say. Yeah. That's good that you gave us the other elements of self care because you're right. We just focus on stuff. It's environmental. It's also spiritual. It is also physical. It's like, oh, that's deep. You all have to maybe do a book on those now. Hmm, interesting. 
that would be another book, the different uh, types of self-care because, you know, I did not know that. So I enjoy learning. Like, yeah. Oh, wow. I did not know that was part of self-care. With that being said, what, what is your legacy that you would like to leave behind when God calls you home? I want to leave behind um, hmm. I, I'm trying to, just remembering God in the midst of everything. You know, I, I uh, as we are training our one-year-old and two-year-old to always give thanks to God. You know, we pray before we eat. We pray before we go to bed. You know, thank you for guiding our, our way in all things. Um, because God has delivered me from some very dark times. So in all things that I do, I always remember the deliverance that he put upon me. So it is my goal to help others seek that same deliverance. And when I am called back, to him, I hope that everyone around me just remembers that, you know, that in all things, in That's all beautiful. aspects, good, bad, or indifferent, that God will always deliver them. That is so beautiful. And also, you mentioned that you are a, a boy, girl, a mom, boy. What that means? Does that mean you're a mama's boy? <laughs> no, it means I don't have boys. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's what I mean. Oh, yeah, boys, mama, boys. <laughs> Lately, they've been, where's daddy? Where's daddy? Where's daddy? Where's daddy? Where's daddy? Where's daddy? So I say yes. <laughs> Honey, on the time of day. <laughs> you, know, I, you know I was going to go there because I was like, e okay, it's time to be personal now. Huh? Mama, boy. <laughs> so two yeah, boys. Yeah. That like, has to be like, fun. Yeah. Yeah, it is fun, but it is also funny to watch because, you know, these little toddlers, they be wrestling and fighting, and I'm like, you're like one and two. How do you know how to do that already? <laughs> well, we did that, too. You have to remember, we did that thing, too. I was sure we were. We just didn't know that we were doing them. It was, yeah. it was just so interesting <laughs> to watch them grow, you know. It, it is such uh -huh. a fun and, and great experience. They are so smart. Yeah. Congratulations on your um, wonderful boys. They grow fast, so enjoy them because I remember my two girls, they were one and four, and now they're 19 and 15. So enjoy every moment because after fifth grade, they may have their own friends. Mom, I'm hanging out with so and so. Oh, man. <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> And how can people reach out to you if they want to book a workshop or have a book signing or they, you know, want to collaborate with you on a new so project? They can email me or reach out to me on social media. My email and social medias are author, first word, my first name, Omari, O. M as in Mary, A-R-I, last name Cannon, C-A-N-N-O-N. If it's email, it's at yahoo.com. If it's Facebook and Instagram, it's just author Omari Cannon. They can DM me, they can email me personally, and I can send them all my information on how to reach my book, how to uh, keep up with my newsletter, if they just want to hear about just upcoming events or things that I'm doing. A lot of my workshops have been virtual, so they don't even have to physically go anywhere. Um, I am trying to plan an in-person event, but I would definitely be at the Saratoga Book Festival in October. That sounds like fun. Ooh, in New York. So I guess you're in New York to stay. You're not leaving, right? <laughs> I'm jealous. I plan on leaving. Oh. I, I, I want, when we get our house in a few years, we will definitely be leaving New York City. Oh, Jersey? Pennsylvania, probably. Yeah, see, you're still on the West Coast. It doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> it's only two hours away. I want to go to Florida so bad. Even down south, but I went to uh, South.
South Carolina this year, and that humidity took me out. I was like, yeah, okay, I'm not built for this kind of <laughs> this life. <laughs> well, you definitely can't do count well. Well, as I got down there, my allergies, my throat, I was like, okay, yeah. I can live down here. <laughs> my city lungs can't handle it. Yeah, the Florida is very humid. Very humid. So I, 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 I could see Jersey. Jersey is pretty decent, right? Yeah. They're human. They're not really human. But the New Yorkers don't go to Jersey. I know. Y'all go to Pennsylvania or Virginia or D.C. I, I understand. You know what it is? I don't really want, we don't really want to be so much in, like, the city, city life. Like, when we leave New York, we don't really okay. want to be in the city. So, like, when we talk about Pennsylvania, we're not talking about, like, Philly or Charlottesburg. We're talking more like Lancaster. <laughs> Okay, okay, Outside okay. What's wrong with that? Yeah. That's, that's, that's called um, starting to appreciate life. You know, sometimes if you've been in New York, so you probably used to being on the go. I still believe you guys should have walking insurance because you got to just keep, like, waiting until someone lets you in. I'm like, darn, how do you do this every day in New York? <laughs> you need walking insurance there. <laughs> yeah, New York I'm like, fast. can I get in? It's so fast. Yeah, it's and very fast. I love with it. Our, our transportation to the streets, yeah, it's such a fast-paced environment. Yeah, it's that being said. Um, who are some of your favorite authors and why? You know, I always laugh when people ask me that question because, interestingly enough, despite the fact that I am an author, I don't read. I am not a reader. Okay. Well, and um, okay. I laugh at that because I like I love your honesty. That's yeah, real talk yeah. right there. Okay. It's, it's, I love know, that. When I say I write from the heart, I really write from the heart. So I can't say that I'm inspired by anyone. I haven't read a book probably like, I don't know, probably since I was in school. <laughs> All right. It's okay. Because you're focusing on your craft. I understand. Oh, that's amazing. And it seems like to me, are you more of a poetic writer, informational writer, technical writer? kind of like labor yourself um or all three it would be all three yeah i guess i would you i would say all three um because it's not really uh my books are not in a sense of you know i'm not teaching like lessons right it is really imagery mm-hmm. based you know like you're really like okay. being walking in the shoots of these characters they're not just like, okay. oh, this happened. Like, no, like, it's very detailed. That's why I say that, you know, I recognize that my book may not be for everyone because of the heaviness of how it's written. You know, I really... I like realness. You for New York, you got to be real. Yeah, yeah. You know, exactly. It, it really yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah, that's New York. I love that. So we need to, to support this dark, you said dark uh, places? Dark Secrets. Dark Secrets. Dark Secrets by Amari Cannon, and that is on Amazon. Wow, I will definitely uh, look for that. So this is like a New York book to the point. No sugar coating, right? <laughs> I love it. It is it's an urban book. fiction book. It is urban fiction. So the language, the content, the imagery, it, it holds no punches at all. Unfiltered, as they will say. I love it. I love that. Be real, because one thing I have learned now about the new audience that we're gaining because of the um, these young people, you have to be real. You know, they see through you now. <laughs> these the next generations and the generations, whatever the whatever the era is, I'm Generation X. Well, <laughs> whatever they call themselves. These days, they are, they know you, they can really see through you. So, for you to have a book that is just real, I'm, sh- I know it would be very successful. And, uh, I, I wish you nothing but good success. And I know, um, this book will probably maybe it'll be a play, you never know. 
look, whatever the Lord puts in front of me, I will take it. Yes, and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you deserve it because you have a meek and mild spirit, and I love that about you. That's beautiful. So before I bring Jerry on, we're going to have you pray us out, but can you give us, like, you know, we may have a listener on who may be facing, um, you know, some darkness in their lives. Um, what kind of tips would you give them to um, help them with not blaming themselves because a lot of people blame themselves for the things that they're going through. And sometimes when they blame themselves, then it becomes, you know, a, another destruction of how they're not allowing their um, healing process to begin. So think on that for me, please, because I was there and I'm sure we have listeners on who would love to hear, you know, um, another point of view. So for me, I, um, I am a huge believer of recognizing that we are not perfect, right? We are, mm. there is no perfect person. There is no such thing as perfection. And recognizing that, yes, sometimes we do fall short. You may fall a centimeter, you may fall an inch, you may fall a few yards, but recognizing that you have to forgive yourself, right? Just like you can forgive someone else when they do wrong to you, you have to be able to figure it for yourself first. And forgiveness could be, you know, immediately, it could be something you work on, working on your self-esteem, working on that hurt, working on rebuilding your confidence, but recognizing that there is no such thing as perfection and it is okay to fall short sometimes. But when you apologize and you ask for, you know, um, forgiveness of not only yourself, but asking Christ, you know, I apologize for falling short, you know, forgive me, you know, help me to understand that I am worthy, that I am able to overcome this situation, that this situation doesn't make me or break me. Right, is always working mm. on understanding that you are more than just your situation and that you may not understand why you're in that situation. Like, I didn't understand why I was in the darkness that I was in in my entire life, but here I am now being able to speak to others on how the Lord has delivered me through so much. And if I can overcome all that I've overcome, you know, why can't you as well, right? God is for us all, not just me, right? And and mm. just recognizing that, yes. understanding that we all for sure in some aspect of our lives, no one is perfect. You know, it, it's not just you. That's You're not beautiful. That is so beautiful. That is so beautiful. Thank you so much for that because... I'm sure we have listeners who would love to have your input because you are you are writing about it and you live it and now you are you are an overcomer. With that being said, my sister, I just wanna thank you so much for your presence and I enjoy this time with you and I wish you nothing but great success. Thank you. And Batman, do you have anything else you would like to add? Oh, you're so sweet though. You're so sweet. I'm 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 coming to New York maybe next year, hopefully. <laughs> you ready? You ready for New York, Kimmy Kim? I love New York. New York is one of my favorites. I yeah. love New York. I've been I've been I've been visiting New York here. since I was a baby because my grandmother lived on uh, Long Island in Wheatley Heights, and then she moved to Harlem with her sister. So um, I haven't really traveled there since 2017. You know, since she both of them passed. My aunt, I think she passed in 20. Mm. She was over 100 years old, my aunt. She lived in Harlem for. I remember years. that. Yeah. But they originally from, from Blackstone, that. Virginia. You know, them, them Virginia people live forever. <laughs> like COVID <laughs> got her, though. But, you know, she did her thing. She was an evangelist. So, you know, she got her life. Aww. Got her life on for Jesus. Yeah. But thank you so much, yeah. Amari. Appreciate you sharing your. Your journey, 
with your books and you know congratulations and we look forward to your children's books so you can come on and be a reader on Ski Jones and the Magical Puppet Playhouse that's right here in Brooklyn yeah yeah you can read it so we appreciate it yeah we make that happen all right, Kimmy. Kim, yeah, Jerry's doing a big thing. We trying, we trying to do the work for the Lord. Try to. I mean, I've been hearing so many things about um, how back in the day we had the advantage because all of our programming was educational. Where now <laughs> the kids not absorbing anything. But you know, I've seen some great stuff on YouTube. It's just that the kids got to you know really be out there searching for. You know, while the parents have to go out there and search for the material, but the material is out there. And there's some good stuff, y'all. You know, yeah. don't let the regular it television is. dictate your life. You know, you got to go searching for it. Amen. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to have my sister pray us out. And uh, Jerry, I just want to thank you once again for this wonderful opportunity. And my sister, I just want to thank you for your presence and your story. And I would definitely be looking out for your book. And I appreciate you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So with that being said, I'll pray us out. Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for this time and fellowship. Thank you for this opportunity for us to be able to connect to not only with, with each other, but with all the listeners out there. Lord, I just ask you to grant us the mind, the clarity, the wisdom, and the power to maneuver our day-to-day lives, both collectively and individually. I ask you to touch the lives of each and every person within the sound of my voice, that recognizing that you can be in the midst of all things in their lives and all things in our lives and to continue to light our paths and carry us in the midst of our darkness. I just thank you for all that you are doing, not only for me, but for those around me and those within proximity of me, and that you continue to lead us in all things in our lives. Lord, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for everything that you have done, both in present and secretly. We thank you for the things that you will do in the future that we cannot even see so far away, Lord, but we just thank you for it anyway. We thank you for the not only the blessings, but also the lessons, because we know that the lessons are what keep us humble. The lessons are what get, keeps us within our faith, because we know that even in those lessons, you have delivered us, and we recognize you in those aspects of our lives as well. We thank you, and we praise you, and we just ask you to continue to be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, all our listeners, we appreciate you guys tuning in. Kimmy Kim, thank you so much for a very nice interview. I really enjoyed listening to you guys. You're welcome. All right. She was so amazing. She was so amazing. Yeah, all right. We, yeah, we got we to gotta have on some other shows so we can spread the word about Amari Cannon up in um, the Bronx. You said the Bronx, right? Yes, the Bronx. Yeah, yeah. yeah we got some shows airing on in the Bronx, too. All right, let's get out of here, y'all. We got stuff to do. Take care, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. This is Jerry Woods Live Worldwide and Dr. Kimmy Kim Robinson right here on Late Night. Take care, y'all. we see you guys tomorrow night starting at 8 o'clock with Dr. V. Take care, everybody. the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of double X9. Positive power 21. Radio. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Hey, hey, hey. My name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Positive Power 21. Jerry Royce Live Worldwide. Hi, I'm Al Caso, and I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, and you're listening to Jerry Royce Live Podcast, the best international radio station in the whole wide world. Hello, my name is C, and I am recording artists from Rwanda in Africa. You're listening to the best internet radio station in the USA with Jerry Royce Live and Positive Power 21.